Hey peeps, welcome back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Potomac, season nine, episode seven. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So oh, in the editing of this video, I realized that you can hear my heat fan going. It sounds like a bunch of air or whatever. I do apologize and I'll be mindful of that the next time. All right, you guys, before we get into it, tonight's the night. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills starts tonight. Who's ready for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? If you're excited, like I'm excited, drop a diamond down in the comments. All right, have you guys been hearing the rumors that The Real Housewives of Jersey has been canceled or at least fully rebooted? The way they did New York, which by the way, the way they did New York, I, again, I have not watched one episode of The Real Housewives of New York. However, I have watched the commercials. I've watched the blogs. I've heard other fans talk about the news show, especially Bethany. Saturday morning, firing a random shot. I have seen enough videos of people saying Real Housewives is unwatchable. It is the Titanic. It is a disaster. 30 people in the country have watched it and bye bye. So this is going to be a hot take and surprising, but justice for Sonia, Dorinda, Luann, Ramona, because they were ride or die. That show was on their back and all of a sudden they all got replaced like shiny new toys. They were all sitting on the shelf like Toy Story, hoping someone was going to come play with them. And instead, I know that a lot more money was spent on the new cast and the new show, massive premiere and like big deal, big swinging dicks. And they've always been like, you know, the stepchildren. They've always been discarded. I know the money they've gotten paid. I know the demotions. I know the budgets. I know the premiere budgets. They know, I know, we know, you know. And you know what? Fucking good. Because the new girls, I'm sure they're lovely. I haven't seen the show. I am actually sure that they're lovely. But these women, as they got older, just got dropped off at the side of the road and bravo now you can't leave you got like 200,000 viewers watching this piece of trash so go get the old girls and dust them off and mix them in and humble pie is coming in hot saturday morning you're welcome oh and by the way go find the tape where i said that the announcement was boring and i didn't understand it i didn't get it i didn't understand the announcement of the legacy and this new show with new, you know, glossy, shiny, produced women in New York that have nothing to do with each other. And look what happened. You're welcome. Watch what happened. Listen, Luann posted on her social media, you know, a little picture of her and the girls hanging out. Um, I miss the old Roni. I really do. Get down in the comments. Are you guys watching the new Roni? Do you like it? Do you miss the other girls? What is going on? I have noticed that their ratings are extremely low. Their season high was 300 and some thousand people watched one particular episode, but mostly they hover in the 200,000 views. Um, yeah, that's low. You know, the original Roni, they, they were always high in the ratings. I don't know, you guys. Is Jersey canceled? Will they reboot it? I did think it was weird that Teresa got second chair on Watch What Happens Live. I think it's possible because she doesn't have a Bravo show that's on right now. So maybe that's why she got second chair. But to be second chair to Ashley Darby, I mean, Ashley is not bringing anything this season. I would be a little ticked. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments and let me know. Let's move on to the show. So, you know, this episode to me was decent. It wasn't given a whole, whole lot, but it was decent. So the episode starts off and you have Stacy and she's at her, what she's calling her crash pad, which is a, you know, high rise apartment in the city. And I was thinking if I was, you know, divorced and well, she's not divorced, but if I was divorced and living in this beautiful high rise, there'd be some sex. Okay. There'd be a lot of sex. I'm just saying, but she's sitting here with this lame guy, TJ. Um, listen, they, uh, I guess it was date night. She pulls out some art supplies so that they could 
you know, make portraits of each other. And both of them were horrible. It really was. But I can't really say anything bad about their artistic skills because I have zero artistic skills. I, I know all of the artistic stuff went to my baby sister. She is amazing when it comes to painting and drawing and things like that. Not me, honey. It skipped me. It, it skipped me and went on to my baby sister. But anyway, TJ and Stacy have a very brother sister vibe. And does anybody notice that she is always complimenting him and telling him how gorgeous he is, how sexy he is, and he never compliments her back? To me, it seems as it's all about him. And, you know, I don't think TJ is all that, but that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, let me move on. The man is not going to sleep with her and they don't have to. Grown people should be able to do whatever the hell it is they want to do. But I don't think that TJ is truly interested in her in any way. What I think it is, is that his acting career is not going the way he thought it would. And he thinks that this would get him back in the spotlight to be on TV. Or maybe she felt like she needed to bring a man onto the show because she's going through a divorce. I have no idea, but this definitely gives Kenya and Walter. It really does. So it's five days before Karen's court appearance and Ashley and Giselle get together at Ashley's house and invite Karen over for lunch. Ashley lets us know that her mom, Sheila, is going through some health crisis right now. She's got a bit of a heart condition and I'm wishing the very best for Sheila. And Ashley is trying to help her mom get on a healthy kick. And, you know, again, I'm wishing the very best for Sheila. Ashley puts together this little spread, but it was a little awkward. It was strawberries, it was popcorn, it was croissants and nuts and a whole bunch of different drink options. I, you know, to me, none of that mixes. <laughs> I don't know, but I like a little popcorn. However, that popcorn looked as if there was not a drop, not an ounce of butter on it. I cannot mess around without some butter. So anyway, they you know, ask Kara to call her out saying, you know, that comment you made about Mia and the opioids and the rehab and all of that stuff. Where the hell did that come from? Karen says that Mia has a YouTube channel. I had no idea Mia had a YouTube channel and I, I still don't. Anyway, Karen said that it was all of this YouTube channel at Bravo puts in a little clip of Mia talking about opioids, the chiropractic and all of this stuff. And I'm thinking, Oh, okay. So there was a little truth to this situation. Giselle, of course, thinks that this is just Karen's way of deflecting. But I'm thinking, first of all, she's told you and Ashley and every last one of you girls that she cannot discuss this right now. So hell yeah, she's deflecting. Move this damn conversation somewhere else. She's going to be going to court in a few days. Allow her to do this. Now, after her case has been completely adjudicated, if she's still dodging and deflecting, then you guys can go ahead and go in and let have. You know, this is your second time doing this bullshit. You know, talk to her about it after that. In the meantime, hell yeah, she's deflecting. Second of all, listen, Mia brought this shit on herself. Mia is the one who came for Karen. She came for the DUI. She was talking all this bullshit out the side of her damn neck. So of course, Karen is going to be Karen and she is going to bring something out too. Karen is never going to be the one that just turns the other cheek. She's not going to do it. And if you turn the other cheek with Mia, she'll just smack the other damn cheek. Mia is like that. So Karen is going to give it to Mia the way Mia gives it to Karen. I'm just saying. Karen does get a little emotional with the girls. She tells them that she can't eat. She can't sleep. She's scared of what's going to happen. And listen, I understand she should be. But I personally think that Karen should get some therapy. We see her later in the episode talking to her cousin, David. David is crying. Karen is crying. Turns out that David was on the phone with Karen when the accident happened. Karen says this all goes back to 2018 when Ray and his taxes, Black Bill Gates, owed all that money. They had to sell their big, beautiful Potomac house. And, you know, just to pay back his taxes, her parents got sick, then she lost her parents. To me, this is a whole bunch of sadness. This is grief on 1000%. This woman has lost both of her parents. I have lost my father. I understand. Grief will kill you if you let it. She has got to start the grieving process and complete it. You can't just grieve on Tuesday and think, oh, I'm good. I'm done. That's not how grief works. Grief comes in waves. And sometimes those waves will pull you under and oh my God. 
sometimes those waves will pull you down and you don't think that you can get out of it. I'm telling you right now, Karen has to grieve this process all the way through. And sometimes the grief never stops. It just keeps coming. And you have really good days and then you have really low days, but you cannot use alcohol to deal with the low days. Karen should join a group for people who have lost their parents or some sort of therapy. And she should probably have some therapy with her husband. And all of this should happen off camera. You cannot cope with alcohol because it just makes it worse. And the problem is the next time this grief overtakes you and you decide that you're going to drink and get behind the wheel, you could kill innocent people. And not only that, you could kill yourself as well. What if you were in this car and somebody you love was in the passenger seat? You could kill them. You understand what I'm saying? Grief is rough. Grief is hard and grief never goes away. It never goes away, but you have to get you some therapy, get you some help. I'm just, I wish Karen and her family nothing but the best. I really do. Get some help, Karen. All right. Um, Karen brings up that Jamal is engaged. And of course, we know that recently Jamal got married his new wife is a doctor. She's a PhD. She is extremely beautiful. She seems like she's not to be played with. I think that Jamal might have met his match. Um, I'm wishing the new Mr. and Mrs. Bryant the very best. Um, congratulations. Uh, let's see how Giselle moves forward. She says that she's fine with it. She's happy for him. However, she said that the girls were a little bit confused because he took the girls to dinner and told them that he was engaged and they were a little confused because this lady went from friend to fiance real quick and they were not sure how the heck that happened. I think that was Giselle's way of just throwing a little shade. Good luck to Mr. and Mrs. Jamal Bryant. Then we see Wendy and her family going out to dinner to celebrate graduations. She mentions that Cruz is now going to middle school and Cameron is going to elementary school. She just graduated pre-K, but I thought that Carter and Cruz were twins. Wouldn't Carter also be going to middle school? I didn't get that. Are they not twins? I think all this time I thought that her boys were twins. But well, shit. Anyway, in the middle of this celebration, I... I I'm sorry, but I'm not the biggest fan of Wendy's mom. And I hate that I'm not. But Wendy's mom sort of irritates me. She has the uncanny knack of making everything about her. And I, I don't understand it. This is her moment to celebrate her children. Please be quiet, Grandma. Um, get down in the comments. Am I being too hard on her mom? I know that it's a cultural thing and I'm not familiar with it. But right in the middle of this conversation, she brings up that she hasn't received her allowance. This party started as an idea, baby, and now it's turned into a, a second wedding. That way I didn't get my allowance this month. Well, mom, since that's yeah. all you care about. Four days late. To me, that just came off as being ungrateful and extremely tacky. Why are you bringing this up right now? And she says that in their culture, the parents raise you and take care of you. But when you get older, I guess the siblings are supposed to pay you an allowance. Now, I don't mind taking care of my mother and I will, you know, when it comes to that time. But I just don't really feel like you need an allowance, especially if you're going to come at me crazy and you're receiving this allowance from all of your children. It's weird to me. And I think that I'm being unfair to her mom. I don't know. I just think that her mom does too damn much. And not only that, they talked about Eddie's family coming to Wendy's big birthday celebration. And the thing is, there's three sides to every story. 
Wendy's family side, Eddie's family side, and what really happened. And we continue to hear Wendy's side and Wendy's mom continues to bash Eddie's family and they do it right there in front of the kids. And I said, well, what the shit? This seems like a conversation that y'all should have behind closed doors. His children should not have to hear this. At some point, hopefully, these families are going to be able to bring themselves back together as a whole family and her kids is going to have heard all this bullshit about their grandparents and aunts and uncles. I don't love it. Don't have this conversation in front of the kids. Anyway, get down in the comments. And seriously, am I being too hard on Wendy's mom? Does she just seem like a more angry mama Joyce to anybody else? I don't know. I'm sick of her mama. Anyway, moving on. So then we get to Ashley's house and can I just give you a little bit of a pet peeve? Ashley's children sitting on the countertops. They don't have any shoes or socks on. They're on top of the countertops. There's a couple of things I don't love about it. One, kids move fast. They could fall off those countertops at any moment and be jacked up. That's not okay. Not only that, they eat there. She prepares meals there. Why are they sitting on the countertops? It's just weird. I don't love it. Get down in the comments. Am I being rude? Am I being too harsh on her and the kids? I think that at any moment they could fall off and be terribly hurt. Those countertops are up pretty high and they're pretty small. I don't love that. Now then her mom comes over. She tells her mom that she's really close to signing her divorce papers. She should be signing them in about a month. Well, listen, I don't know if her and Michael are still married or not on watch what happens live. She was saying that she's going to make an announcement about it, you know, at the reunion, but she wasn't divorced in a month. I'm saying that. And Ashley still has zero storyline so much. So as I think she embarrassed the dog shit out of her mom by bringing up that raggedy ass relationship that her mama has with that raggedy ass man that she's with. This is what drives me crazy. Ashley has brought up multiple times on this show that thanks to her marriage to Michael, she has been able to take care of her mom talking about that. If she didn't have her marriage and money with Michael, her mom would be living in a tent. This is the thing. Her mom has decided to stay with this raggedy ass man. I do not know why I know back in the day, back in the day, women used to think that, you know, half a man was better than no man. You know what I mean? No, ma'am. Those days are fucking over. I'm serious. This is a raggedy ass man who barely works. Most time he doesn't. Her mom who is not in good health is working 12 hour shifts, busting her ass to take care of a raggedy ass man. Now listen, I think that with Ashley being with Michael and having all the money that she has, all the fame that she has, all the big paychecks that she's getting from Potomac, she should definitely be able to help her mom a little bit so that her mom doesn't have to work those 12 hour shifts each day, especially in this condition. Also, you have access to stylists and people who make good wigs. Why the fuck does your mom not have a good wig? I, what, what, I don't know how I got to the wig, but anyway, her wig on this episode was much better than, you know, the previous wigs, but still, it still looked, anyway, listen, Ashley's mama, stop the bullshit, stop the insanity, seriously, no grown ass man is gonna be laid up on my fucking couch while I'm working 12 hour shifts, busting my ass and not really bringing home much, fuck this shit, you can do bad all by your damn self, I just cannot, no ma'am, I'm just saying, Ashley, I do not like that you have no fucking storyline and you got your mom on here embarrassing this woman on national television. It's foul. It's wrong. You need to get your mama some therapy. She is clearly going through something that has happened to her who has stunted her right where she is with this loser ass man. I personally would have told my mom, Listen, mom, I'm willing to retire you, but this dude is gone. Do you understand? I would not let my mom work like this, especially if I have the money to take care of her. I would absolutely put her in a nice apartment and tell her if I see this dude, it is on site. Do you understand me? He is gone. He is not good for you. He is a loser who is mooching off of you. Not going to do it. Not my mama, damn it. Anyway, get down in the comments. What do you think about Miss Sheila and this raggedy ass dude? Now, honey, we get over to Jazzy's party. And she, you know, first of all, her fiance, Darius, is it Darius? Um, 
Yeah, honey, he looked good in that suit, didn't he? Very attractive man. And, you know, we find out that he's got not one, not two, but three Super Bowl titles. I said, well, shit, who knew? Well, everybody who watches the sports, but I didn't know. And um, they all get a ring, right? They get a real nice ring. Anyway, I think that's nice. Um, Giselle shows up there and she sees Ink. And she says, well, Karen calls him DJ Applebox and Karen is absolutely right. However, when Kay gets there with Greg, her man, him and Ink are the same height. I said, oh, shit, that's cute. Um, that was just rude. I'm sorry. Anyway, but, you know, Kay's man matches her heights. Actually, she had on heels and she, anyway, anyway, Giselle was talking to Mia and Ink. And they talk about how they operate in love. And they just want to make sure that the kids is happy. And I said, really? If you really wanted to make sure those kids was happy, Ink would not be involved. This would just be you and Gordon planning out this divorce in a nice civil way. And not having all this shit about y'all's marriage and all these extra affairs and all of this dementia and everything else on national TV to embarrass the shit out of these kids. Uh huh. That's how you take care of a kid's happiness. Disappear, Ink. Anyway, when they're talking, Giselle's face was so shocked. She's looking at them as if to say, This could not be really happening. Am I really in the Twilight Zone? These two people are idiots. And I was thinking the same thing. So Kay decides that she's going to take a moment to get Mia all the way together to let her know that Greg is absolutely not a dealer. And Giselle jumps in and she says, Mia, you know, that was wrong. You could be damaging this man's reputation by saying something like that. And Mia makes this comment where she says, I can definitely look at him and tell he's not a dealer. And you know, she was trying to throw shade. She was like, he's definitely a social worker. And then she gives a little bit of an apology to Kay. I don't think she believed that Mia was sincere. And I don't think she was either. Honey, then the next thing you know, here comes TJ. Wendy said when she seen TJ, she could look at him and tell he was not sexually active. Um, I rewound that twice. I did. And he just looks sad in the eyes, don't he? Then he makes this comment that in a relationship after sex, then he's bored. There's nothing else there. And I said, well... If you saving it for marriage and been saving it for marriage, how do you know that you're bored after the sex? Because I was thinking when he was back at her bachelorette pad, he made a comment that he's not having sex with her. And I thought, well, who are you having the sex with? I, I don't know. I don't trust TJ. And then when they make the comment about they went on a date to the zoo, it actually was like, run. You know, a zoo date is cute, but... This relationship is not, <laughs> you know what I mean? You painting each other and going to the zoo, not doing anything else. I just can't imagine being in my forties and not getting the, anyway, this is not about me. Um, this is not about me. So Giselle's ass. Okay, she runs back and downloads Mia on everything that Karen said. Mia comes for Karen that she she says, Karen, you are in no position to come after anybody, baby. Okay. I said, oh, shit, you're about to pay for this for real. Okay, so Giselle tries to pull them to to the side. She says, let me just talk to me and Karen for a moment. And what I don't like about these times is when you try to pull two people to decide to have a conversation all the rest of the girls just float over I don't know if production is sending them over or if they are just so damn nosy and so damn out of touch that they don't realize these two people just said can we talk by ourselves you just have to drag your ass into the conversation I hate when they do that but I did not go to rehab. Right. I overdosed. Okay. okay. Well, you went to the hospital. I did. And this is how I got introduced no, to chiropractic you care. You were being messy. I know. I was returning, sir. If you don't start I'm with me, coming. won't be no I'm not coming what? for you. I love you. Well, your love is strange, you. girl. I, I, I am willing to say that you are wrong, and I am wrong for going low. Thank you. Okay. okay that's big. I, I okay. say that, but I will go low again. 
When you go low, I return serve. I, we Let's know how low you go. Can, Let's we, just, can we just balls. be okay? He's where the balls hang. Low is the balls hang. Yes, I like balls, so that's well, good. I don't balls. think that's good. Okay. And you know all about low balls. Well, no, I'm not the yes. one. No, but you've been on so many public balls, it don't matter. See, listen, Team Karen, you brought this shit on. You started this shit, and Karen is going to finish it. As she has always said before, if you bring the bullshit to me, I am also going to give you that same damn energy. And Karen warned her. She said, you were wrong. I was wrong. You went low. I went lower and I will go low again. She does not lie when it comes to that. She will go low as hell. Karen will take you all the way down to hell. Come back up and drag your ass back to hell again. She is that girl. Mia pretending to be friends with Karen is bullshit. Mia is not there for Karen. She is not friends with anybody. Mia is just happy to be on TV and she wants to be seen. She lies constantly. What Karen said about Mia in the public balls was absolutely true. She was wrong for trying to bring up Ray's balls. Girl, shut up now. Something just popped in my head before we go to Mia's apartment with Ink and Gordon. Remember when Ashley would always get mad at Candace and always bring up how Candace's mom takes care of her? Do you think that she was jealous of Candace's relationship with her mom and how stable her mom is versus her relationship with her mom and how she seems to have to try to take care of her mom? That just popped in my head. Get down in the comments. Do you think that Ashley was actually jealous of Candace? I mean, now that Candace is not on the show, she's doing that singing, that healing and thriving. And, you know, I don't want to be rude, but Ashley singing is nowhere near as good as Candace. I just, you know, I'm sorry. Let's just move on to Mia and Ink. Um, get down in the comments. What do you think about that? I told Mia that I'm not filming with you. Why are you pushing to be on? I'm not pushing to do anything. What I'm doing is supporting my lady. That's what I'm doing. I am not going to do one single thing to help promote you all's relationship. F it. I ain't okay with it. I'm not about enriching you all's situation. There's children involved. The fact that Ink is a part of our co-parenting. I don't care. Like, I don't need him to be a part. When I look at him, I see a person had adultery with my wife. I also see a person who's trying to separate my family. No. That's, that's what cow. I see when I look that's at him. Cow. How about when you had an affair with my wife shortly after we got married? She got pregnant and had an abortion because of you. But Gordon. Okay. Well, no, no. Is no, that a fact? No, this, 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 my, this is my first time fast. hearing that. Yeah. Bullsh yeah. Bullsh yeah. Stop. Bullsh Stop. First time hearing that. Yeah. Stop. So. But so, you think but you're you, a master kid. You guys, yeah, I told you that. Yeah. Listen, Gordon. No, no, did you have you two affairs have with already, my wife at least? But listen. Stop. Why? Did you have two affairs with my wife at least? Was there and adultery committed? I was willing was there to adultery try to committed? make it work and stand They're not answering by the your question, side. So that's a yes. All right. So at some point, Ink says that Gordon needs to be mindful of the children. I think that you should be mindful of the children and you absolutely have no business in front of those kids in any way. Rather, Mia is pretending that you're her friend. You know, friends are not seen in bed together with their kids in the house. Um, Mia should be mindful of the children as well. Why were you trying to have this discussion with the kids in the house? You know what? I wasn't mad at Gordon at all. I don't mind him for putting his foot down. Mia and Ink have played in this man's face enough. And I think that he was right to say, cut the bullshit. I don't want to film with you. I don't want to talk to you. I'm trying to co-parent with you and that's it. And you know what? I, I was here for it. You want to try to put him on camera. You want to try to embarrass him. Then he's going to repay that and embarrass the hell out of both of you. He is not going to be used by Mia any longer. And I think that he has every right to say, I'm done with this. I don't want to film with you and ink. I don't want ink around my children. I think that he should go to court and get court order that states that ink cannot be around his children. He only wants to focus on co-parenting with Mia and he doesn't want to be on camera film with ink. And I think he has every right to not want to be bothered with this man. He also has every right to say, keep him away from my children. And I'm tired of Mia. Mia just lies so much. Ink is her childhood sweetheart. 
Um, she was married to her first son's dad. Then she overdosed, fell in love with Gordon, founded the joint practice, which was supposed to be Gordon's family business already. You know, she just lies a lot. I don't know whatever is the truth that's coming out of her mouth. And then Gordon dropping that bomb that she aborted a baby by ink and ink is sitting there as if he doesn't know what the hell is going on. So this is how he finds out that she was pregnant by him at some point. And ink and Mia being concerned that the kids are going to hear all of this, but you're publicly putting this shit on TV. You're airing out all of your family's dirty laundry right on television. As if these children that they go to school with, their parents don't watch The Real Housewives. All of this stuff is going to get to the elementary school. Gordon wants information. Oh, so you want to film? You want to talk? Let's talk about these affairs. How many affairs did you have? I don't want to deal with the man who has been, you know, actively having affairs with my wife. I don't blame him. Mia and Ink are gaslighting the hell out of Gordon. And she says that he's got some sort of mental health condition. Why are you doing that? You're trying to break this man down. You're trying to ruin his reputation. You are doing all of this to somebody that you claim that you love. Mia and Ink are full of shit. And Gordon needs to get some sort of legal um, agreement that Ink cannot be around with his children. Or he should put some sort of agreement that his children cannot be filmed. I don't know, you guys. I'm sick of Mia. I'm sick of Gordon. I'm sick of Ink. Their whole story should not be on television. That's just my opinion. Get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.